Hey everybody, in this uh, edition of Getting It Done, um, Final Cut X training, we're going to be talking about transitions in Final Cut X. We're going to keep this brief, straight, and to the point. Transitions are, are what I would call active editing elements. Active editing elements. This means that transitions tell a part of a story. You don't just throw these in. Now, to begin with, we have to understand two terms. First off is transition. It's an active ed uh, editing element. This basically does some form of animation between two clips. The other term is a cut. A cut is, sim is simply changing from one clip to the next clip. It's just the space where two clips come, uh, connect. Most of what you're going to be doing in 90% of your editing projects will just involve cuts. But if you have a particular thing that you want to uh, express, um, <clears throat> you can use transitions. Now in Final Cut, you're going to find transitions on the right side of your screen in this toolbox. It will be the uh, box that looks like it's got an X in it right here. And there's a variety of different transitions you can choose from. Now, I usually describe that transitions come in what I call two flavors, hard transitions and soft transitions. Hard transitions are ones that do dramatic things to the whole screen, like this, or like this. Soft transitions are things that are very subtle, for example, the cross dissolve. We simply blend two clips together. Or, say, the directional dissolve. Blends two clips together like this. Hard dissolve, you have the whole screen fall out. Yeah, that's hard. Fade to color, soft. Fairly straightforward. The whole thing falls forward, hard. Flashback, soft. All right. Generally speaking, you can use the soft much more often than you can the hard. Soft transitions tell a part of the story. Hard transitions generally are used to basically end a story and shift to the next uh, major point. So, for example, if you're thinking about a sitcom that basically goes to break or comes back from break, you may have a hard transition where the whole screen boxes up and is thrown off the screen, and then you go to break. That's a perfect use for a hard transition. But something like, say, the passage of time is a, is a space for a soft transition. Now, you may have seen how that worked. It's very easy. Uh, whenever we want to use a soft transition, or any of these transitions for that matter, we simply grab the transition, move it into our timeline, find a place where it locks, on one of these cuts by the way, and then drop it off. And you can see if we want to move it, we simply grab it and move it somewhere else or move it somewhere else. Now, there is a limitation on this that I want you to know about uh, as we sort of wrap up for this video. Notice as I expand it out, I can only expand it so far. And then you'll see that the left side of my uh, transition turns red. The larger the transition box is, the slower and often more dramatic the transition will appear. But you are limited in how large your transition can be by the overall duration of the two clips that you're combining. That's right. In any sort, in any transition that you may be using, and I am just going to uh, grab a piece of video here, the whole thing I'm going to grab, and drop it off. And then the whole next piece. And drop it off. If I've got these two videos, 
or these two clips, I'm limited by what transitions I can use or in my transitions by the overall duration of both of these. Now, a lot of students find themselves in trouble in this and any other editing program because they'll take the beginning or the end of a clip just like what I did. I took the entire clip all the way to the beginning or from the beginning all the way to the end of both of these and I'll try and drop the transition off. You'll notice that it's not allowing me to drop it right there. Notice the difference. If I go back to one of these where I've marked in and marked out, see how it will let me drop the transition there, but it won't let me drop it there. If I try and force it, I get an error. It says there is not enough extra media beyond the clip edges to create this transition. What that means is that it will it will go to the end of this first clip and try and grab additional footage to make that transition. It will also go to the beginning of this next one and try and grab additional footage here to make that transition. There's nothing beyond this clip and there's nothing beyond this clip. So there's not anything for it to combine. You've told it you want everything up to the very end of this clip in your video and you want everything on screen all the way to the very beginning of this clip. Well, in order to do that, it's got to make sure that the transition doesn't overwrite the clip that's on screen. Now, if you were just to grab uh, both of these videos and back them off just a bit, You've created space uh, beyond the edges of these clips, and the transition would work just fine. There it is. Now, they are also still limited by how much space you have, in this case, on that side of this video. If I were to limit this more, and drop it off, you'll notice now my limitation comes from how much extra space I have on this video. So the final thing I want you to understand about transitions is in order to use them you've got to make sure you've got enough space on both sides of the cut uh, beyond what you want on the screen for the transition to happen or the transition won't be able to happen and even if you do force it it'll look jarry and it'll look wrong. Good way of doing this, sh uh, uh, making sure you can do this, is when you're shooting, shoot before the action occurs and keep recording after the action is done. Uh, this gives you the space to add those transitions later on if you choose. Just also a good practice.